All right, according to the Biden administration, OSHA's requirements on businesses with 100 or more employees is not a vaccine mandate. It's not a mandate because it allows employers to choose whether to require employees to be vaccinated or to be require or to require unvaccinated employees to mask and to test. Now, when asked yesterday how employers can utilize the testing option when there's a shortage of tests right now, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said this. Remember what the objective is here. The objective is to make workplaces safer, to provide more security to people. Uh, if you look at the uh, data that just came out this morning, Jolts, that was a shout out to Bloomberg. They'll get that, they'll get that reference um, data that came out today. There are still many people who are fearful about going back to work. That is one of the reasons why it's important to put in place these requirements. Well, if people are afraid to go back to work because of COVID, will vaccine mandates make people less fearful considering that the Omicron variant, which is by far the most dominant right now, can spread to both the unvaccinated and the vaccinated? This might be one question that pops up when the Supreme Court hears oral arguments this Friday over the mandate on these private employers. With me now to talk about this is one of the state attorneys general who is challenging the mandate in court, Alabama Attorney General Steve Marshall. General, welcome to the program. Thank you, Tony. Always good to be with you. Well, let's start off with your reaction to the White House press secretary's remarks. What do you think about that? Uh, it's par for the course. I mean, to somehow argue that this isn't a vaccine mandate, when that's exactly how the president described it on September 9th when this was first announced. But let's also recognize the Supreme Court likewise has the case involving health care workers as well that's going to be before the court on Friday. And that's an absolute mandate for vaccines. There's no testing exception to it at all. So what are employers to do right now where there's this shortage of tests? And so if is it truly an option? And by the way, it's not an equal option either, because under the mandate, if I'm not mistaken, and correct me if I am, General, the OSHA requires that employers give time off to individuals to get a vaccine, but makes no accommodations for those that have to get tested. In fact, uh, the employee can be forced to pay for the test. No, not only can be forced, will be forced to be able to pay for the test. And again, it's a reflective of the coercive nature in which the Biden administration has dealt with this. Uh, but yet it's, again, not surprising you had a president that uh, before he took office said that federal mandates for vaccines were inappropriate. You heard him two weeks ago discuss the fact that there is no federal solution uh, to dealing with this issue. It's one of a state matter. Uh, but yet they continue to push these issues moving forward. Frankly, we've been very successful, all but one decision with the Sixth Circuit thus far in fighting the OSHA mandate, the health care workers, the Head Start victory that we just had last week, uh, as well as what we've seen on federal contractors. I'm very confident that the Supreme Court will see through the fallacy of the Biden administration's arguments and restore us to this idea that we're a republic where liberty matters and not one where we're akin to a monarchy in which uh, one rule can dictate what goes on across our country. Yeah, I think you're right, General. I think the scoreboard, when you look at it, uh, the, the numbers are for the state attorneys general who are defending the Constitution. So far, no points for uh, the president in his mandate. What are some of the arguments you anticipate uh, hearing Friday from the Biden administration defending these mandates? Well, I think it's what you heard from the White House spokesperson just recently, that somehow or another this is going to provide uh, greater safety, for example, in the workplace, when the reality, Tony, is there's a greater risk of contracting some form of COVID from the, the dinner table at home with family or around friends than there ever is in the workplace itself. These are arbitrary rules. I mean, why 100 employees, for example, rather than 75? Uh, but they're going to, to somehow or another, allege what uh, we've heard come from at least the Sixth Circuit. This really isn't a mandate, but it's an option. But the reality is that this is placed on employers. We're going to lose individuals that we need in the workplace, whether they're working with kids and Head Start, whether they're healthcare workers that are working with those who need uh, valuable care provided by Medicare or Medicaid, or whether it's our businesses that I've heard from across Alabama and across this country who are saying it's tough enough for us to be able to get workers to work now. We're going to lose many if they're required to be vaccinated. Well, that, that's an extremely important point to be made because that's happening, and it's happening in particular in the healthcare field and, of course, first responders as well. But when you look at what the president, or the Biden administration, I should say, has claimed that this is about keeping Americans safe and healthy, that's why we're doing this. But when you're driving healthcare workers out of the profession, creating shortages, how is that making Americans healthier and safer? 
That's the great question. And it's one that frankly, they can't answer. You know, the reality is they're making it more difficult uh, for employers to be able to provide valuable goods and services to those in this country when we see shortages from the supply chain being so difficult right now to be able to manage to generally being able to provide the essential services that we need throughout our country because we can't find the workers to be able to do it. This policy itself uh, is counterproductive. It's not doing anything to ultimately make Americans safe. And again, it's a very challenge to the liberty interests that we hold dear in this country. General Marshall, one of the arguments most likely to come forward uh, by the government is that OSHA standards routinely require the use of protective controls if employees would prefer not to be subjected to particular health or safety measures. So there's a, they say there's a precedent for making them do things that will protect them. But is there a precedent for making employees inject a foreign substance into their body? There absolutely isn't. And in fact, what we see here is OSHA not relying upon their traditional rulemaking where individuals have an opportunity to provide comment or negative comments to what is being proposed, but instead, using an emergency standard uh, that requires a finding of grave danger in the workplace itself. If there was a grave danger that existed for employees across this country, then why did the Biden administration wait 11 months to be able to announce it after vaccines became available? Why did they make three months before they issued the rule after President Biden held the press conference on September 9th? The reality is that grave danger doesn't exist and there is no statutory authority for this administration to issue that rule. General Marshall, we wish you the best on uh, Friday. We'll be watching that and listening uh, to the oral arguments. Uh, I hope you and your team uh, have great success. Thank you very much.